the thing with Kerry is he's he's um, he's a super visual director, so he's very visually astute. Um, he has an enormous encyclopedic knowledge of various things, including architecture and art, other films and so on. So, but he doesn't actually, unlike some other directors, give you a very specific detailed brief. He likes to just let you bring some things to the table. And there's a great sort of history of design and of, uh, of ideas that, you know, um, the, the Bond has been quite imaginative in many ways and, and groundbreaking in some ways with its ideas and its scale and its colour and its things. So. It's, it's, it was it was a real honour to be to be given the job. I think he, he looks and sounds better than ever, you know, and it's something to do with maturity, I suppose. He's grown into that part; it's become his own, and he's made it. I mean, this is a chapter we're coming to the end of, but this particular chapter, he's now. I look back at the first one of those films and. No disrespect to him, but I also look younger, but he looks younger. But now he looks like a sort of super weathered integral bond. And this is his chapter. And almost like it, it is probably a very good time to, an appropriate and good time to say goodbye. And, um, but um, but he, his performances in this film are superb, you know, so he's given us everything, you know, he's given us every last ounce, in fact. You know, he injured himself in trying to do it, you know, it's... Um... I think when you come to see a Bond movie, you're, you're not coming to watch a, a drama, you know, you're not going to stand a drama. You want to see something that's visually alert and exciting and interesting. So even a Scandinavian house, you know, we poured over the way to make that look good and plan the shots, how the walls break apart so Lena's can shoot in it. So, you know, you're, we're looking for a, a grand aesthetic and, um, you know, uh, together with all the departments, there's some amazing people involved in making these films, yeah. So people at the top of the, of the, of the well, they're just very inventive and extraordinary. And um, so I, I've had an absolutely amazing uh, experience making this. It, I, I can't deny it's been tough, you know, the time restraints and things have been tough, but I think the thing, we've, we've not let go of that. Um, uh, challenging for a for a grand aesthetic that would you know be appropriate for a Bond movie. Trying to find things that are sort of extraordinary, you know, new new inventions, new ideas, extraordinary places. But that that world has a sort of simplicity that doesn't actually isn't is more has a slight theatre in it, opera and theatre than like a sort of classic standard film. Yeah. So we're looking for a bit of scale. As I say, we're all looking for this, this idea of glamour. And this is a good example to come to Jamaica um, because it sort of, it does the glamour for us, you know, in a strange way. It really, you really, as soon as you see Bond on the pontoon, you do kick back to some of the Sean Connery films and pieces, you know, you think, wow, that's super cool Bond. And, and there's something about this place that's just, you know, because it's, as you say, it's the spiritual home of Bond. It's the place where the books, where Fleming lived and wrote the books, you know. So, and we've been here a couple of times before with Bond, and so it's sort of always played well. So it felt appropriate in terms of the spiritual home, in terms of a glamorous place to come back here, yeah. And, um, you know, do it justice for the 25th anniversary version of Bond.